It touched me in a special way I ain't felt in a long time. The peaches and the cream. I told you I was a fiend. What's up, everybody? I'm David, and you know I love a good barbecue, but only on a budget. So today, I'm gonna show you how to make a barbecue for four for only $20. As you can see, I've already went shopping and we got some pretty good deals here. Now, I did go a little bit over budget, but I think we still did pretty good. The total only came out to $20.43. As always, we're gonna use a few of our pantry freebies. Today, we're gonna be using olive oil, sugar, salt, and pepper. Well, with that, let's get started. Now, we're gonna start with this pineapple barbecue bacon burger. Now, these are gonna be pretty epic. I mean, it's wrapped in bacon and stuffed with cheese. What more could you want? The first step is gonna be to take your ground beef and just season it to taste with a little salt. Maybe about one and a half pie or something like that. You know, nothing crazy. And do the same with your pepper. Make sure that you use enough since this is gonna be for all four burgers. Now we're gonna go ahead and start to incorporate this seasoning together. Just use your hands and work it in really good. And then we'll put in about a cup of barbecue sauce. Wanna make sure we get all of that in there. Now we chose burgers because ground beef tends to be a little bit cheaper and it's always a fan favorite. And when you stuff it with cheese, everybody's gonna be happy. Now, after you've got your meat ready, you wanna go ahead and section it off into about four pieces so that you can have four big juicy burgers. They're gonna be big. We ain't gonna give you that little fast food burger you be having at your cousin barbecue, you go home hungry. Don't nobody like that. And after you get it worked into a nice little ball, we'll place it onto our baking sheet. So then you can use a soda can or beer can, whatever you have around the house to help you make that little crater where we'll fill our cheese. So I'm gonna go ahead and just smash it down in there. And you wanna make sure that you try to build it up around the sides so that you don't have any cracks in it. And then we'll take our bacon. You wanna go ahead and just slide that around. It's gonna to get to bubbling and, and, and baking in all over the place. Now, you know we're generous here. So we're gonna use two strips, wrap that around. And now once you've got it all nice and wrapped, you wanna take a toothpick and just insert it wherever the bacon overlaps so that it'll stay together as it cooks. So one right there. Then I'm gonna put another one on the other side. And maybe one more over here just to be safe. And then you can lift out your can and you should have a nice little crater for your cheese. Now we decided to get a block of cheddar cheese and cut it ourselves rather than getting some shredded cheese or pre-cut cheese because it's a little cheaper. Now you can also experiment with the cheese. If you wanna go crazy with a little Gouda, Havarti or Munster, whatever them little fancy cheeses is, go ahead and do it. I'm not gonna hate. We're just gonna repeat that step three more times and we'll be ready to put these bad boys on the grill. Got my burgers ready. I've got my pineapple slices. I was lucky enough to find a fresh pineapple. Went ahead and cut it into four slices so we have one for each burger and now we're ready to go. Let's get these on the grill. So we've got our grill up to about 375 degrees. I'm gonna place these burgers over indirect heat. Now what that means is we've got this left side of the grill turned off and the right side we have both burners on. So when we close it, it's gonna act just like an oven but still give you that nice charred flavor that we're looking for. All right. We're gonna baste these with the barbecue sauce every 10 to 15 minutes. You wanna go ahead and just drizzle, dabble, douse, you know what I'm saying? All type of delicious sauce adjectives and just let that flavor get in there as it caramelizes and cooks really nice. And now we're gonna place our pineapples over direct heat. We've used a little paper towel just to remove some of the excess water to make sure we get some really nice grill marks. Mmm, already smells good. And we'll just let these pineapple slices cook for about one to two minutes per side until we have some nice grill marks. I'm basting these for the second time. These guys are looking good. Now let's go prep our sides. Now I know, when you're thinking hamburgers, you're thinking fries, but I wanted to put just a little bit of a healthy spin on it. Besides, string beans are pretty much the French fries of vegetables. So we've got some string beans and some potato wedges we're gonna put together. Now to get started with our potato wedges, you're just gonna take your potato, already peeled, put it up on its side like this, and cut it down the middle. Now you can take that and just cut it into some nice sized wedges like so. Now we're gonna take those wedges and place them into our bowl. Now when you're on a budget, salt and pepper your friend. Don't be all fancy trying to get the pink Himalayan and all that. This, you know, nice sea salt does just fine. Now the piece de la resistance for me, you know we're always gonna teach you how to use a little seasoning packet. And today I'm excited because we got garlic parmesan. That's my favorite thing to put on wings and all types of things. Now, I'm gonna be generous with this one because I like it. Go ahead and get that well up in there. A little extra pop, pop, pop. Just a little pat on it. Just do a little pat like that. Just a little pat like that and it's gonna go up in there good. Now just make sure you get everything coated really nicely. The olive oil, salt, pepper, and seasoning so that it grills really nice. We'll do the same with our potato wedges. 
It smells amazing already. And with that, I think these are ready for the grill. Now that our burgers have about 15 minutes left, we're gonna go ahead and get our sides on. Now with these potato wedges, we're gonna throw them on the grill for about five to seven minutes per side. That garlic Parmesan seasoning packet is gonna come in perfect. I can already smell the flavor. And now for our green beans. Make sure all your veggies have even contact with the grill. We don't wanna overcrowd it, so if it takes a couple batches, that's fine. We'll cook these potato wedges for about five to seven minutes per side. You'll know they're done once you can see the beautiful grill marks and they're easy to pierce with a fork. Now that our veggies are done, we'll go ahead and get these burgers off the grill and assemble them. All right, it's time to put these burgers together. We're gonna go ahead and start with just a little bit of lettuce on the bottom. And then we'll go ahead and get that delicious burger oozing with cheese. And last but not least, that beautiful charred pineapple. All right, everyone's for sure gonna love these. Now that our burgers are put together, we're gonna go ahead and put our side into a nice little bowl. I've decided to garnish it with a little bit of lemon. Yes, there's a little bit and got one. And we can go ahead and put some fresh lemon juice on the top just for another nice flavor. So at this point, I think I deserve a taste. Let's go ahead and see what we're working with here. Definitely gotta get some of these delicious green beans. And of course, I'm gonna need one of these amazing burgers. All right, this is pretty big, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in half so I can actually get a bite out of it. Now that looks like heaven. Too good to be true. Amazing. Burger's awesome. Let's check out these sides. Mmm, amazing. That garlic parmesan seasoning packet was the perfect choice to make this fire. Hi, y'all approve, baby. I mean, at this point, we've spent less than $20 pretty much, and we still have dessert. So let's go ahead and put it together. And now for dessert, we're gonna make some grilled peaches and cream cinnamon rolls. I know it sounds amazing, just be patient, please. So to get started, we've already floured our surface and we're gonna take our cinnamon rolls here, go ahead and get them rolled out. Now I've used these before, you've seen them on Dollar Dish many times, they're affordable, delicious, and you know, easy way to make some of the best dessert. So I'll go ahead and get these bad boys out onto my surface. One more, he thought he was gonna get away, but that's not gonna happen. This Dollar Dish, we use everything. Now you'll make two rolls of four out of your cinnamon rolls because we're gonna put them together and roll it out so that we can have one large piece of dough to work with. Now, once you get them lined out like this, to be honest, it's probably best to just use your hands and smash it down a little bit. Now, the other important part is to try to make sure you get all those little crevices or spaces in between the individual rolls to blend together. And you wanna try to get it about eight or so inches across. Now that it's come together, we're gonna go ahead and sprinkle a little bit more flour before we roll it out. Just wanna make sure that it doesn't stick to our rolling pan. Now you can kind of stretch this out a little bit. Just try to stretch it just about to each end. Now that we've got this all rolled out, we've got some fresh peaches here that we found in season, really great deal. We're gonna add just a little bit of sugar, about a tablespoon or so, to really help bring out that sweetness in our grilled peaches and cream cinnamon roll. Now go ahead and just mix that together. Let the sugar coat on them. We'll go ahead and put it onto our cinnamon roll dough. We'll try to spread out our peaches as evenly as possible. You wanna make sure you're still able to roll up your dough after you're finished. There we go. All right, now you wanna carefully roll your log. Make sure you tuck all those peaches in there. You wanna make sure you do it nice and tight and maybe just use your hand to kind of firm it up a little bit towards the end. I recommend trying to cut it in half. Go ahead and cut those into halves and then do the same with the four pieces that you have. And now that you've finished cutting them, you'll take a seven inch grease cast iron and you wanna take one of them and place it into the center and then just place all seven around it with the fruit facing up. And with that, it's pretty simple. These guys are ready to go. Peaches and cream, I need it because you know that I'm a fiend. Let's go ahead and get them on the grill. Now that we've got our grill set to about 350 degrees, we're gonna put these on for about 30 to 35 minutes or so. Now, just like we did with our burgers, we're gonna cook these over indirect heat so that we can have an oven type of cook with the same barbecue flavor locked inside. All right, let's see what we got here. Wow, now these look amazing. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to share these with everybody, but um, let's go ahead and get the icing on these and finish putting together this amazing barbecue. Now, what's the peaches without the cream? At this point, we've definitely got to drizzle over that nice icing that came with our cinnamon rolls, like so, just to add a delicious little topping. Mmm, I can smell the peaches and cinnamon. This is gonna be amazing and the perfect end to a nice barbecue. Before you try it, you wanna make sure you let it cool for about five or so minutes. I mean, after waiting this long for a delicious dessert, you don't wanna burn your tongue. I've waited five minutes. It felt kinda of like an eternity, but at this point, I've definitely gotta try it. This looks too good to be true.
It touched me in a special way I ain't felt in a long time. The peaches and the cream, I told you I was a fiend. That's the absolute best end to a barbecue that I could ever think of. For only $20, we made an epic pineapple bacon barbecue burger, some super flavorful garlic parmesan grilled veggies, and an indulgent grilled peaches and cream cinnamon roll. I hope you guys enjoyed and can try this $20 barbecue at home, and let us know in the comments what you want to see next on Dollar Dish. Oh, yes!